Hello and welcome to Edigami's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the current affairs and gazette for today, 11th of March 2022. Let me welcome all of you people here. Hi Amlan, Netra, Babani, Ashish, Kriti, Hima. Kim, Nishtha, Pooja, welcome, Kanupriya, good to see each of you writing here, thank you, great effort from you people. And capitation fee, not a big term at all, it's not rocket science, it's very easy to understand, capitation fee, we'll just discuss that, it is just the amount of donation paid to get an admission, right, so this is not dependent, not primarily dependent on uh, the competency also dependent on the finances, fin financial powers of the people who are getting admitted. This helps the institution grow. We will understand both the sides. All okay? All right. So, medical manpower, these colleges open profit, little consideration. Yes, we will discuss this issue as well. The issue of uh, uh, medical industry and how it must be handled well. So, what do we have on Gazette today? We have... Uh, Three updates, land monetization, corporation being formed by the government, innovative scheme for the MSMEs, how the government is trying to uh, forge an ecosystem. This is not only for uh, uh, the, let's understand this in, in totality. Fee guidance for private medical college, this is the one related to capitation field, we will understand each of them. You, and you very well understand the context in which the third one has come up, right, the age limit for entering into medical, medical universities has gotten... Uh, you know, has been eliminated, the fee guidelines have changed. This is in the context of uh, students coming back to India from Ukraine. This day in history is dedicated to Sambhaji Maharaj, son of Shivaji. Featured news on pharma sector in India, the status of pharmaceutical industries, why India is called as the, uh, the pharmacist of the whole world, what are the issues with Indian pharma sector, what are the prospects, how is it integrated with the global pharmaceutical industry? We will understand this in totality. In fact, pharma forms 7% of India's GDP. And, uh, and, and it forms the third most important component in uh, India's export. Right? Export, a part of export GDP. That's what I meant. So, we'll understand this in feature news for today. Image of the day on uh, a part of Chandrayaan exploring argon in the, uh, in the outer, outer uh, environment of, of moon. Terms and concepts for today, Dharma Guardian, traditional mission medicine center of WHO being on open, only, only one of this and that way in India, e-invoicing and the Indian ship which has been recently discovered at Weedle Sea. Editorials for today are one, make in India deals. We will understand about uh, the schemes which are trying to make in India and what are the issues here. Defense industry and the third one is on farming as a service. Today's case study is on a case study from Aspirational District. Beautiful program, Kanya Taru Yojana from Assam. So let's start this discussion. And before that, there was a question that was posed. The question said this. The question says, this is relevant to all of you. That is why I'm putting up here. Sir, I have a trivial doubt. I feel instead of making notes, why can't we just refer to some institute's name, IAPT Monthly Magazine. I understand it's good to write and jot down important stuff that I also do. But then maintaining them, revising them is actually quite taxing at times. Alright, let me underline what is being mentioned. It's, it's good to write and jot down. It's good, they acknowledge. However, maintaining them and revising is is taxing maintaining and revising is, is taxing it's a little tough for them so why not just watch your videos write some topics a line or two and then at the end of the month referred pt okay referring pt becomes important in that way because this is what is their substitute and while revising through pt recall your points recall your points okay and if not able to recall then we can always go back to your videos all right that is good enough this is also a repository for you even in notes even in notes also we'll have to find the right find it right shouldn't this work too okay good question i really don't mind making notes this is what they say but just finding a better way or don't know looking for a smart work type thing that might save time later smart work the i'm i'm looking for the best cut for you the shortest cut for you 
the crow fly distance for you i also don't want you to put efforts again and again but this is where you will have to trust you will have to trust the experience and you will also have to and in case even in case you don't want to trust that's fine because you know it comes with experience and age so why don't you look at the xyz monthly magazine once and what they are teaching and and uh, or what's written there and what is what we are sharing here right because our daily also contains similar content but what we do here it goes beyond the daily right it goes into understanding now many things if we understand well we don't even need to write but then most of those persons who are such they are god gifted i am not i need to write i need to keep revising and that is what makes me uh, uh, some somebody who can who can recall faster and if you have a photographic memory you will not read to write but there are very few people who have this power but then look at uh, uh, what i want to say maintaining them revising them is taxing if this is taxing then the actual exam will definitely be taxing because when you write the main exam you will have to go to the exam center on five days different days and then you have to write nine papers Three hours in the first half, three hours in the second half, and this is the final examination that I'm speaking of. We would want, or anybody would want, you to revise this complete thing at least ten times before you go in the examination. That's what Usain Bolt does, no? That's what marathoners also do. The final attempt in the examination is nothing extraordinary. It is just excellence getting repeated. So if you say it gets taxing, yes, yes, and this is why. we need to practice it so that it doesn't take effort initially it will take effort but with practice it will become effortless for you because things will be there in your mind it one will have to improve right we, this is where the transition lies this is where the growth lies growth and expansion if there is a crisis right now that you are facing you must be i am sure that you are facing a crisis but this crisis is a challenge if looked at from one perspective and an opportunity if looked at from the wider perspective so context is decisive right on the other hand you can also look at uh, the monthly but then tell me this is the monthly not available to everybody it is it is just for you to pay or even get online and then get it printed then what's the difference what's the difference between you who is getting it printed and the other person who is purchasing it in the, in the market that will not make you uh, succeed that that's the truth and i am asking you to take the pain the understanding part is my part making you understand is my part the content part is our part but then you have to remember this is what is your part and if in case you want to refer to the pt no problem but then understanding that also will be question right no problem uh, see recalling recalling has to be done at the level of every day and weekly and once you are able to do it for a, for a, for a few months many topics will get covered for example the topic uh, that the first topic that we have in snapshot that is land banks right uh, the land bank operation that has been formed we have covered that twice previously and it it was covered in september and october just that it has gotten repeated because the company has gotten formed so 6 8 months and whole content will get repeated right so that's what i say that if you have remembered it once you will not need it uh, you know any other reference yes other reference material can be used for gaining value addition value addition but uh, uh, you will not need it if you are a participant here you will not need a lot of things uh, and going back to the videos i will not advise you this searching and then referring and then you know uh, spending all that much time when you are doing it already once once and for all let it get done and your notes will be only your notes it will be completely personal see when i i have explained this to all of you previously i threw all my notes four five years back thinking that you know there's no use of it and i had a lot of notes i had books also i had booklets as well but then uh, what i preserved was ncrt books that's what i did i thought i might not get them but it's my foolishness notes is what i would not have ever gotten and i'm not able to show you my notes there are hardly a couple of copies left i had geography optional philosophy optional 12 14 you know note notebooks completely prepared and uh, those were my personal all the books they can be retrieved they can be purchased but those notes i even have them imprinted in my mind the images but i don't remember the facts and data so notes are the most powerful things they are your personal things provided you are preparing diligently right so uh, this is what i want to say and i want to help you become the smartest that's what i want and this is where i say some of remembering some of mugging up will be necessary some of it rest of it you must learn to mix and match things
for that some painstaking effort right now right and also see there is a difference between just watching and engaging yourself this person this lady here is writing along with watching and the other person is watching by putting hands on their uh, uh, on the cheekbone uh, um, on their uh, yeah so the point i'm saying is uh, better engagement mere the mere thought of writing it initiates our uh, sparks in our brain i'm not saying this psychologists say this psychiatrists say this and once you start engaging your hands into writing it will start getting imprinted in your mind more practice will make you better at your game and your game is to clear the examination okay so this is the uh, question and this is my take on this hi gopal good evening hi abhinav jai hind ashish sir reading understanding and remembering pt stuff in 2 3 months before the exam when it's released is a tough job right ashish amran says that's my biggest mistake in second attempt hima says for me to i have to write and jot down something down even when i am reading book to remember otherwise yes otherwise it will retain only short few days uh, there is a there is a curve retention curve it is drawn by psychologists itself they say uh, most of the content that we look at every day in fact uh, 60 70% content is lost in a very short frame of time a few hours and almost 90% of the content is lost uh, by at the end of a couple of days more than 90% of the content is lost and if we want this not to happen then what we got to do is at the end of the day we must quickly revise it so retention increases and then it will still get lost and then at the end of 3 4 days it must be revised again retention again uh, you know stays with us and then uh, revising at the end of the week so three revisions by then and then the retention capacity of this content retains more and had we not revised it would have gone to almost zero so retention exceeds if we revise a couple of times yes it's a painful thing but now this is where i want to i want to ask uh, you all uh, you know or, or tell, let you know that you know you should remember only this much study only 5 hours only 5 hours a day if your optional is done 5 hours is enough for you right if your basic books are done ncrts are done 5 hours enough but then remember that this 5 hours has to be concentrated study in which you revise all what you are studying even if you study 8 hours or 9 hours a day but then there is no revision this is only going to get sublimed right a good word that i use all the time sublime it will get lost i i also studied a lot and this is where i am concerned about you people not that you don't put efforts i have seen that effort with you people and it is staying one of the reasons it is staying is because you are in practice of writing right now right okay and ashish says that understanding the pt stuff Uh, you know and remembering is, is is a tough job see the best part about pt exam is that remembering is not as much as required why is because you have got four options answer is right there all you have to do is tick on the right one so the horizon of coverage has to be wide in pt the depth of the coverage has to be uh, wider in main examination so in pt examination remembering all that much might not be required but yes coverage should be required right that's this is the difference so memorization will not be as much required for pt okay see to each their own i'm not saying uh, pt 365 for from any institute won't help i'm saying it it will help it will help so so prepare so much of time so that you are able to look at those uh, you know uh, uh, monthly or uh, the yearly magazine 365 so that you are able to cover the wide expanse and i would not say you should remember all of the content but you should go through it so that you don't miss out on some key facts so that you know in options you only have to take the right one that's what i'm saying daily current affairs forms a story sets perspective but sir revision is a challenge for me dekho bhai revision hi to karna hai revision is your part of the deal it's part of the deal this is 0.01% 1 1 to the power 365 is 1 1.01 to the power 365 is 35 that you do with us that you do with me but 1 plus amla knows this but 1 plus 0.01 plus 0.01 to the power 365 this is 700 this is your effort here revision and uh, preparing notes and this is what you do with me this will take you to 35 that means viewing the videos and doing your uh, you know experiments but what i say 
if you remember this six months six months only not even six months okay four months you will start seeing repetition in topics that's what that's what i want to say if you remember that four months of content it will only get repeated only a fraction of data will get added all the time smriti hi if i watch the gazette on daily basis will it be sufficient <laughs> that's what we are all <laughs> hoping at yes just add revision smriti welcome i i got to know about you and himanshu that you would be joining this so welcome We'll keep dealing with this, uh, these questions, Smriti. Uh, there are a lot of us, we ask and we understand the answers. Many of us are here in the first attempt, second attempt or the third attempt here. So um, feel free to ask questions, how to prepare note, what to do. Is it sufficient or not? Just hang on for a week, you will get a knack of what is happening and then uh, it, you know, you will be able to flow smoothly after that. Okay, so if there are questions, please post them here so that we deal with it. And then, okay, moving ahead. So please be free, feel free to ask these questions. These are most important foundational questions because on the basis of this, I will be able to prove to you, na? because if you, if you're referring to the main, uh, you know, or PT monthly magazines or the yearly magazines, do they have that amount of content? Do they have those case studies? This is my question. In case they have, have you memorized them? No. So then if you're looking at it, but not memorizing, it is not helping you. It will only get sublime. So therefore revision is important. All right, the first update is on National Land Monetization Corporation. This has been formed. See, have a look. Most of the content has gotten repeated. Now, people who are there in the month of September, October, if you've not done this, then uh, at least do it right now because it has been a prime target of the government, land monetization, national monetization pipeline, land bank company, survey of defense land. You've done each of them. And I explained this four times. This is the first fifth time I'm going to talk about it. So, if you do the major things that are in government's list, this is a part of economy, a part of governance, a part of uh, uh, garnering investments for the government, right? So, this uh, company has been formed right now, National Land Monetization Corporation. What is it going to do? It is going to ensure that all the government land which is lying waste and unused, government assets and the land. For example, these are PSUs, this is HEC. Heavy Engineering Corporation Limited, based in Ranchi, a loss-making POCU government wants to shut it down right now. But then, it is now that they have planned, no, but otherwise they've had acres, hundreds of acres of land. Similarly, defense land, I'm not talking of the core defense assets, but the there is a lot of adjoining area. Defense had carried out one of the largest exercises of, uh, uh, of uh, knowing the expanses of these kind of unutilized land. Similarly, railways also, along the railway track, there's a lot of land which lies waste. This all can be subletted. This is railway land, this is PSU land, this is defense land. What government says is that now, since we are expanding the infrastructure base, we want companies to get installed in India. We want land for some or the other purpose. And we will not divert forest land. The forest proportion in India is around 33. And we have to, is not 33, is 23. And we are supposed to increase it to 33. So we will not divert, you know, we will not, uh, you know, utilize forest land and decrease forest cover. We will, in fact, try to make the land use efficient through utilization of the waste land present by government itself. Government is the largest owner of land in the country. So uh, rather than they getting encroached, let us formalize the structure in which we are able to pass it on to corporates. And they will also create land banks. This is what land banks corporation is about. So when, when they create land banks, one can lend the land from them and then in, have their institution created, factory created, right? If there is a software company, we can get it created through them. Government also will have a complete bank. No, what is available? Where, where is there is a wasteland? Where, where can we increase the um, planning and you know mobilization of people, construction of buildings? So these are the important things about land bank. How is it going to help government? Minorously, see, government wants to inject 100 lakh crore rupees, 100 lakh crore rupees under national infrastructure uh, plan, national infrastructure pipeline or plan, whatever is the word, uh, and 100 lakh crore, the government. And government says we don't have this finances by ourselves. So central government, state government, and privates, all of them will participate. Central government will give around 40 percent of the money. It is 102 lakh crore. 102 lakh crores. So around 39, 40 crores central government, 39, 40 crores is by state government and the rest around 22 crore is given by the uh, private sector, 
right so this is how the government wants to participate and in this central government 39 lakh crore central government says that we will we will have this kind of expenses covered will they be able to create extra funds or extra finances through creating printing money they are trying their ways best in this they also initiated something called as national monetization pipeline in monetization pipeline they say central government assets which are lying waste they have brown filters already have been created but not being utilized see these buildings the area here the assets here or land itself here they say we will monetize this we will give this on contract we are not selling it this is not disinvestment we are only giving it on contract 5 year lease 10 year lease and they will pay back some amount of money or they will utilize this for monetization they will create they might create a swimming pool there they might create a a uh, uh, sports ground there and they will share some revenues or profits with them with us and this is how government says they will generate 6 lakh crore in the coming 4 years 6 lakh crores that is the agenda and 6 lakh crore is amount around 1/6 of the 39 lakh crore that central government has to generate this is how they say they will generate this amount but but i will tell you the shortcomings here i will tell you the shortcoming this is the plan and i have discussed this this is a part of the feature news also we discussed but i'll tell you the shortcomings so now land monetization corporation has also been formed for this purpose ownership central government completely under the administrative jurisdiction of finance ministry capitalization some money has been authorized see they can raise total 5000 crore rupees but paid up capital this much 150 crore has been given right now for the operation of this company all right now uh, so in this national monetization pipeline government has envisaged as i mentioned 6 crore 6 lakh crore of uh, 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 you know finance total finance generation finance generation in 6 lakh crore 2021 22 they said 80 8000 crore they'll generate next year this year coming year they said 1.6 lakh crore but then the reality is that they are failing in these targets they have set either way too ambitious targets or private sector is not ready to invest right now the private sector is not ready to even purchase they don't want to purchase no disinvestments are not happening at at a good scale the world is already at a place where the finances are at peak and there is further disenchantment to invest at places around the world even the best investments are now you know falling off the peak so this is not the best time to start looking at investments because people will not be coming uh, you know the sale of government properties that is disinvestment is not happening and then look at uh, uh, the contract if they don't want to you know purchase only contract also is another problem with them they don't want to even contract right now so this is one or possibly the monet the value of monetization that we have set is far too big for example if if this land's value for monetization if it was 30000 rupees suppose government says no 1 lakh rupees you have to give me 1 lakh rupees if you want this piece of land so exceeding exceeding value or the real uh, you know private sector not interested in participation right also uh, uh, integration of all this infrastructure all this is an issue now in this 6 trillion master plan that we have had three sectors are participating majorly road power and railways these are three sectors which are contributing to 66% of the finance to be generated 66% under land um, uh, monetization plan all right see it says national monetization plan worth rupees 6 lakh crore of which rail, road railways and power will comprise of 66% now these are not green field assets please remember nobody is constructing new building to give on contracts all the created buildings or land will be given for that this asset has been formed see uh, the government target for disinvestment also has decreased and they are not only it is not only decrease for disinvestment but monetization targets also are not achievable that is the problem right so these are the problems possible challenges lack of identifiable revenue sources i have got this railway land but i i don't know how if if private sector takes it how will they utilize this land they don't know they don't know if the market is located nearby or not government has still monetized this see in putting in the papers putting in the papers that this can be monetized and this is the you know the proportion in which finances can be generated this is only happening in papers on real time basis on real ground basis nobody is purchasing it so this is a failure of uh, ministry of finance similarly failure of cpm one another department of the ministry of finance right uh, please confirm finance or commerce their 
disinvestment targets disinvestment and land monetization both of these schemes are not doing very well they have met hardly 10% of uh, disinvestment if in a private job if in a private job one meets only 10% of the you know stipulated or designated targets should that person be fired from the company or not yes absolutely they should be they must be they have met only 10% targets 90% of shortcomings so either they present what are the issues or they should be fired but then secretary cpm is still you know functional and working right so these are the challenges so lack of identifiable revenue streams land is available but how to generate revenue people don't know dispute resolution mechanism another uh, issue various litigations and lack of clear titles who owns the land low interest among investors in remote land parcels this is there along with that you can put uh, uh, the valuation of assets overvalued all right so this is the update here I refer to these articles as well if you would like to important article right important from the perspective of economy these points can be put anywhere in uh, governance and economy msme innovation scheme this scheme is going to ensure three things not just intellectual property rights not just design and not just incubation all three of them together so in case one of you has got some brilliant ideas we have amlan who's got some brilliant ideas these ideas will be respected enough in three ways firstly firstly your idea will be supported through intellectual property intellectual property will be eased for you right uh, understanding this there will be somebody to assist this this is one part of the scheme the second part is that in case you have this idea you will be given some finances to be able to uh, work on that particular uh, idea 15 lakh rupees so in case you want to go to you know take a flight and go to taiwan and after that you know uh, route yourself to kiev in that case you will be given 15 lakhs and you want to of course help the students there for that reason you will be given 15 lakhs for you know uh, creation of this idea and its demonstration and in case it is successful you will also be given a maximum amount of i think 1 crore rupees for showing the whole you know uh, process through a design that design means uh, importing of the uh, goods capital goods through which you are able to produce this entity right so earlier we have had schemes for intellectual property preservation for incubation centers for design centers they have been operating separately but right now we have all of them getting operated alongside right incubation center designing of the complete program right so importing of important uh, um, uh, machineries spare parts and intellectual property conservation each of them will be respected through msme innovative scheme a lot of uh, data what is the amount what not you don't have to remember so much of data all you have to remember is that this new scheme is going to help launched msme innovative scheme right uh, with the idea of hackathon let me show you an example when people go when people go to a defense expo or people go to an auto expo these are the places where people have already incubated incubation no i hope you understand what is incubation right so uh, they have already incubated these devices and they financed it by themselves they sold off their land property the father's property and they created this and in expo they look for investors people who can help them scale their work but then when the government is ready to finance when the government is ready to support them in pro providing them intellectual property when the government says that you design it we will pay for it a maximum one crore rupee this is where msmes get the primary support that is why this particular scheme ah uh, yeah this is the amount financial assistance up to 15 lakh per idea and up to 1 crore for relevant plant and machineries will be provided all right so this is the thing here but then please don't remember 2.5 40 lakh don't waste your you know bites of your mind in remembering all this right designing and then ipr protection this is what is envisaged through this particular scheme all right we have covered a complete feature news on uh, intellectual property conservation if you've not seen it's worthy you must watch it we are going we are going to study a little more about intellectual property while we cover the uh, today today's feature news that is on that is on uh, medical industry pharmaceutical industry third update is on fee guidelines for private medical colleges now 
this is the news because many students they came back to our country from Ukraine. We've also studied that many students who go abroad, it is cheaper for them to study abroad, right? There are lesser availability of medical seats in India. Not only that, they, are, they have assured seats there and then they can come back to India and practice. But then again, shortcomings in the examination where they can, uh, you know, the, the pass percentage in the examination when they come back to India is very less. Not only that, uh, crisis like Ukraine crisis has raised issues of, of uh, being able to how to pay back the uh, pay back the finances this is one not only that when students come back they have to complete the complete degree in a stipulated time in case they don't there is a year back and multiple issues prime minister said very clearly that we must create these institutions in india right right now we have got around 500 plus institutions medical institutions for uh, undergraduates and around 80000 plus seats 80000 plus seats in india for mbbs and out of them Half of the colleges and half of these seats are government colleges, right? And half of them are private colleges, autonomous universities, all of them, right? So around 40,000 plus seats with government and around 40,000 seats with the private organizations. The government seats are at subsidized rates, at the fine rates, right? In which everybody can afford. But if you look at, so this everybody can afford and naturally anybody who, who you know, writes the examination, they would prefer a government college itself to study and if they are not able to get through a government college people also apply on the basis of states or through neat examination for private universities once they get through they also have to pay they have to pay a least amount for example if the government college fees is 10 lakh rupees private college would say charge 40 lakh for a seat for a seat but in case you have not scored good marks and you want to contribute to the growth of the college also and uh, uh, you've scored a decent marks, maybe 50%, if 60% was the passing marks, you've scored 50, 40%. And uh, you are able to provide one crore rupee to them, the institute will still admit you, saying this is a capitation fee. You are able to provide us finances for growth. You also have marks better than the minimum required. So this fee is enough and we will have you inducted. Now this fee is going to help this college grow. So it becomes a profitable institution, profitable institution, it, it gives profit to its stakeholders, people who are entering will not only help the college grow, they will also be able to divide the profit amongst themselves. So this becomes a profitable institution. Now health services, education services, the government has said, the courts have said they, they cannot be profit, profit making organizations. Another challenge, another challenge is this, that when these organizations this is the example of AIMS, but this example is also valid for private colleges. Whenever we have uh, uh, the MBBS colleges, I have explained to you that there is also a hospital attached to it. Now, more often than not, that means many times the hospital charges are subsidized for people. That means if I have to treat myself, if somebody has to treat themselves for cancer, or if somebody has to treat themselves for a particular ailment, the prices will be subsidized for everybody. But then if this is subsidized and the private college also has to run alongside, what it does is that it charges more the students who are studying there. So private colleges say if we are not able to charge the capitation fee, then the problem is that we will not be able to cross subsidize it for the people coming to the hospital. This is an ethical issue. And I've told you many of the MBBS colleges, they have hospital alongside. So this is one of the contention that they say. On the other hand, government says that if, if, you are uh, uh, operating and you know taking fees that is fine but then so this is the latest order that has come from the government's end you divide seats all the uh, 40,000 seats that you have into 20,000 and 20,000 50 percent of the seats you will have to charge at the subsidized rate at the flat government rate and and for so total 75 percent of the 80,000 seats will be at very very decent nominal rates but for the rest of the 50% seats also, you cannot charge capitation fees. You will have to charge nominal fees. This nominal fees will be dependent on the last three years of the curriculum uh, fees standardized. No profit making, but yes, you can charge around 6 to 15% extra for the growth of the institution. For the growth of institution, you can charge this much. Also based on inflation rates, you can escalate the rates, but there will be no further escalation in the uh, finances that is paid by the student for their whole tenure, right? So this is what government has said. But then the private organizations say, if you are asking us to 
if you are asking us to subsidize 50 percent of the seeds for people in general it is very natural we will cross subsidize this with the, the other people uh, through you know management quota or or um, capitation fees otherwise how will we be able to run this is the contention but the government has said this is uh, you know you have to operate so you have known the issues first issue is government college along with uh, along with medical institution cross subsidy is an issue then a medical a private medical college will also the government gives a lot of funds to its own organization autonomous organizations but government does not give funds to private colleges right they grow only through what they receive from students from uh, uh, their fees so this is where they say we will not be able to grow this what about our scientific uh, research technology developments they will all be hampered if we do not receive the finances so this is the contention and this is what government has come up with it says national medical commission has recently released guidelines for fee structure in private medical colleges including deemed universities from next session colleges will have to charge fees equivalent to government medical colleges in the states for half the total approved seats and for the rest half also they cannot charge exorbitant fees as simple as that more seats at lower fees right so 75 percent of total seats 80,000 plus seats will be available for everybody mentioned here merit based system through merit all right neat ug test undergraduate test right it will be a uniform regulation no control on the fee structure for uh, private dream universities earlier there was no control but right now there will be control imposed on them so it's not that earlier the seats were not getting filled they were getting filled but by the people who could pay but right now it will be paid by uh, it will be filled with those students who are able to uh, secure good marks that means uh, this is about merit merit based system right ending capitation fees oh why does it say caption this is capitation yeah here is the word capitation fees the guideline states that no capitation fee can be charged by the medical college and uh, the determination of the fee will be on not for profit basis basis all right and this will be on the basis of the last three years in case the college is a new setup then uh, uh, they will have to charge according to the rates that were charged by the last college that was set up in that state all right so this is it cap on development fees in case you want to charge a development fees because you want to create a new building a new uh, console in the house then 6 to 15 percent of operating cost you can charge all right but no cost of running a hospital associated with medical college can be included in student fees so in case the college is running short on finances the the hospital is running short on finances you cannot cross subsidize but but only one case in one case where there is huge amount of losses huge amount of cost overruns happening in the hospital then some amount can be uh, you know cross subsidized only in that exceptional case and that also for a limited time all right see for hospital running at heavy losses state fees regulatory commission may allow the college to charge a portion of it or the student for a period of five to seven years that's it so more burden on management quota seats absolutely those students will have to pay more but then this is only a contention government has said you can't even charge all this all right the whole pattern of payment will have to be revised now demand supply mismatch all right see these are the issues and need for ppt ppp model this is where the private organizations say we need a ppp model uh, if you if you don't ask us to invest in our infrastructure then you pay for this pay half of uh, you know uh, these things so this is what is the update all right this is very much relevant when we talk of mbbs over these graduate students who came back to india and are looking forward to completing their courses and and all the other students who might have gone abroad needs all india quota all right this was also in news all india quota some reservation there right so these are the updates ministry of commerce thank you hi smriti smriti no newspapers for now if you are even looking at newspapers yes for everybody all i would like to tell you here is that if you're looking at the newspaper that's perfectly fine but don't spend a lot of time spend five minutes glancing at the headings just the headings this is what i want to to share with all of you previously as well just glance at the headings and you don't know or you know it that's fine uh, in any case we will discuss it if it is relevant to upsc we will discuss if it if it is not you might not you, you should ask these questions on the chats Sir, I don't understand this topic well. Ask, we will explain it to you, right? So don't spend extra time in the mornings. Mornings are the best time to revise, to remember. Exert that time for yourself. 
right so newspapers spend limited time and uh, in the evening we discuss all of it right kim says initially it was tough but since one month making notes has become a lot easier kim i would like you to remember all what you are making okay ministry of commerce sipam thank you hi peace welcome back so should it not be deepam oh i think it's sipam uh, uh, we have two organization we have got a deepam also we have got a sipam also sipam is uh, uh, an autonomous organization probably i'm getting confused between two organization i think sipam is for uh, intellectual property and deepam is for investment i'll get back okay deepam is under ministry of finance and sipam is i think under ministry of commerce okay we have both of them existing uh, this day in history dedicated to shambhaji maharaj he was the son of uh, shivaji and the father of shuja right so on 11th march uh, he was killed all right update feature news for today is on pharma sector in india you will understand in context of the jan aushadi week it was celebrated by the government of india the whole week march for march 1st to 7th was dedicated to jan aushadi week so we've got jan aushadi centers in our country right distribution of pharmaceuticals around the country at subsidized cost so you know these uh, shops would be set up they are already set up around the government uh, government hospitals and people would be able to get subsidized generic drugs here we will understand in this feature news why is india called as the uh pharmaceutical base of the whole world we will also understand what are the issues in pharmaceutical sector what are the exports how are we importing the complete supply chain value chain or pharmaceutical sector we will understand in this feature news so this is the update here this will be a part of the feature news immediately after this video image of the day on uh, chas 2 chandra's atmospheric composition explorer 2 they have explored something here Although we knew that argon existed in moon, but then knowing that it existed on the upper atmosphere, exosphere, this was not known. So they have been able to explore this right now. All right, Chandrayaan two. India also looks at launching Chandrayaan three because Chandrayaan two was not a completely successful mission. The uh, the rover and lander they crash landed, and this is why India wants to send Chandrayaan three. Also sending a Gaganyaan manned man space mission. These are things which are uh, pending 2023. This will be completed. Terms and concepts. The first one is Dharma Guardian. This is a military exercise between India and Japan being conducted. See uh, an image from what I got from the newspaper. These are the kind of exercises that they hold. They learn from each other technology. They learn from each other. The, the ways in which uh, close combat operations can be conducted, they learn from each other, uh, handling situations together. So just in case, just in case, if there is an operation to be conducted in Indo-Pacific, around Sea of Japan, around Sea of Okhotsk, Sea of Okhotsk, please look up in the map, a place where uh, Russia and Japan have got conflicts, right? So in case India has to uh, fight alongside Japan, these are the exercises which are going to build capacity, interoperability between these two countries. And meanwhile, the Australian army chief was also here in India, right? Look at the uniform, Australia, right? A decent amount of the country as desert and look at the shade of the uniform and India's uniform, shade of the uniform, OG, olive green. Olive green represents the darker shade of green. And uh, this is very much synonymous to ecological uh, systems, no? The, the green tropical forests. And so this is how the uniform is camouflaged, all right? So this Dharma Guardian exercise held here, exploiting disruptive technologies like drone and anti-drone weapons, knowledge and cooperation. This is very much indicative. Whenever you want to say that India, Japan are, uh, are collaborating better than before, give the examples of uh, these kind of things, right? Defense exercises, technology, Indo-Japan townships, if you remember, townships. So increased association with a country like Japan, which has got uh, great... GDP, uh, you know, very few resources, but immense technology, human resources development. Uh, this association is going to be fruitful in the longer run. WHO, traditional medicine center, the only one being opened 
around the whole world traditional medicine has been recognized by who and they say that we will be opening one extension center right this extension center outpost center will be out of the who office and this is they are going to create this in jamnagar in india so they have recognized that ministry of that ayush the alternate system of medicine can do something for the world and this is a great boost because if ayush finds a place in the world map then india will be the exporter of these services and uh, and and uh, commodities right already we are receiving a lot of tourism which is not conventional medical tourism but yoga tourism in india that is absolutely true a lot of people foreigners come to study yoga and then go back a lot of people come to understand the alternate system of uh, healing to india this all all or oh, what what does it give, give us it gives us foreign currency we save this foreign currency it gives us business right and through this business is generated goodwill and through goodwill more people come in so this is a virtuous cycle start using these examples and how this w H O G C T M, right, is going to help us. Global Center for Traditional Medicines, Jamnagar, Gujarat. The third update is on e invoicing. One of the best features that has come up in the last one year is e invoicing. E invoice is nothing big, but just that you would know the significance. Production of the bills online through machines. Now. Uh, this is the government order for small businesses specifically e invoicing was made mandatory by the government last year okay ever since april 1 2021 it is compulsory for businesses with a total annual turnover between 5 crore to 75 crore small businesses to generate e invoices in their business to business b2b transactions it has disrupted the tax ecosystem as well as helped in curbing tax evasions right let me explain this to you and uh, you know increasing the uh, simplifying the compliance procedures earlier people would give this kacha bill you know no? kacha bill kacha bill means you know they would write on a piece of paper uh, 5000 rupees we purchase then uh, 10000 rupees this item costed you pay 15000 rupees this is the bill and they would have enormous number of bills they would be able to do their calculations but then this would not be a part of the tax receipts for the government because in this in this item the uh, gst was not included and they would also ask us do you want us to include gst if yes we will give you an invoice bill so earlier they had the option of giving either a physical generated bill kacha bill or invoicing and people also would say give us this only why to pay 18 percent extra or 12 percent extra is it not true many of us have gone through this however uh, government said for small businesses also this invoicing is a must now this invoicing ensures that for small businesses the complete log complete log of uh, 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 you know purchase business to business transactions it is logged at a particular place not only this government will be able to get taxes not just this the compliance of this taxation will be further simplified because this is all getting generated online online system ensures that the compliance is easier if it was offline then you would have to you know collect the bills look at a photograph and then say that yes all of it is authentic and then send it not only this not only simplification and taxation look at um, uh, the input tax credit itc in case the business wants to take back some money because there was cascading effect of tax it wanted to return it wanted to get back some tax because it has already paid tax in one of the previous transactions so input tax credit becomes more credible if online bills are presented see so human errors will be reduced fraud will be reduced cash flow will be handled well input tax credit remote working and loans in case in case if i am the owner of the business and i am not at that particular place i don't know what kind of taxation my employee is generating in that case this online taxation will be very much credible so in that case remote working is also possible and if i want to take loans on my business this is what it is because through this I will show that I have generated a business of 15,000 rupees. Legal business. If it is a kacha paper, banks will not understand this. See, so these five, six points very much helpful with the help of e-invoicing. Now use this as a case study. Use this as an example. Show that the, uh, you know, the collection of uh, revenues by the government, 1.4 lakh crore rupees per month of uh, revenues through indirect taxes is being facilitated through invoicing. E-invoicing. That is the power of digital technology right so big good example for you
see easily easily accessible loans remote working all of them e invoicing this is the benefit all right blessing in disguise fourth update is ship endurance 100 years beneath antarctic antarctic ice all right so we are talking of this particular ship this was lost in the antarctic ice in the year 1915 the idea of the explorer was to circumnavigate through the south pole this is what something that they envisaged 106, 106 and 7 years back but then this the their ship got stuck at uh, the ice and because of this they slowly and steadily started to submerge and then get later got drowned all the people were rescued in, in a, you know later uh, uh, a few years they were all rescued from this place and the ship was never to be found again it was found only lately right that is why it was in the hindu i think day before yesterday and it was found uh, at Weddell sea Weddell sea is a sea which is uh, just associated with the antarctic look at the map you will be able to understand what this place is and uh, shackleton shackleton was the name of the captain who was who was behind uh, this mission of circumnavigating through the uh, south pole right so the ship was crushed by antarctic sea ice and it sank about 3000 meters below surface on the of the ocean 1915 see going 3000 meters down by a diver is not possible they have to go in special vessels because there's a huge pressure pressure of water and uh, uh, it, it is not feasible uh, had it been that feasible that easily feasible you would have been able to retrieve the polymetallic nodules but it is very tough and that is why special missions were conducted now finally we have found this ship the person who was investigating they said that the wooden ship it was it was it is still as fresh as it was uh, as it would have been uh, 100 years back right the project uh, to this it became a part of uh, a project in which the you know um, uh, that it was designated as a monument so people cannot retrieve objects from that particular entity this particular ship right is it was a part of international antarctic treaty and this means nobody can disturb this ship now anymore that cannot be even brought back to the surface right you're talking of the endurance and the person who was the captain shackleton all right this is the update okay what is it Sambar was in, 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 the, in the kitchen in Tanjavur. How come this? Okay, okay. Kriti gives the example of innovation. Amlan, look at this. People are challenging. All right. Kriti says, near Kamchatka Peninsula. Okay. Good enough. Oyashio, Kiroshio. So, how do you remember o, 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 Oya, Oyashio and Kiroshio? Okay. O is to the north and K is to the south. Very simple. Cold currents, warm currents, easy enough, okay. Hi Naranjan, good evening. Okay. Endurance, last year world's largest iceberg, A73 broke off in the Weddell Sea, yes. And uh, yeah, we covered that in one of the images of the day. Which country, can anybody tell me which country did this ship belong to? And, and in fact, I don't know if you people are utilizing this feature or not. Let's go to Edukemi's website. Quickly sharing with you some updates. Smriti has joined for the first time. Go to resources. Current affairs. Gazette. This is what is the gazette and uh, I am sure that the PDF has been uploaded by now. These are the articles for references. You know, you can click here and look at the reference articles in case you don't have the PDF and these are the sources. These sources we do not put in the, the PDF, however, they are here, right here. So, you can refer to the articles from which we have picked up this news. Now, we are talking of this particular term, ship endurance. Let me see. This was taken from Hindu, I remember. All right. Shackleton, this is one of the articles. Okay. I think this was uh, British. Falkland currents, Falkland Islands, 
ओके कैन एनी बडी हेल्प मी टेलिंग एगुलास करेंट्स आई होप यू आर रिमेम्बरिंग सम पार्ट ऑफ जोग्राफी थ्रू दिस इट वॉज इन द पार्ट ऑफ दिस येस लंडन येस लंडन सो यू के European countries only largely because 1915 they were the ones who were selling out here and there. Make trade deals for make in India, good one. Have a look. The total this article itself talks about the total global trade by India. The imports are the are, are to the tune of 400 billion dollars and the imports are 300 billion dollars. See, so now total trade is 700 billion dollars. Amongst this is more of the imports. 400 billion dollars and around 100 billion dollar is oil import only but if you remove the oil import there are countries in southeast asia japan south korea the article says that these are the countries through which we can have increased partnership it says in the reference of uae with with whom we have had a sepa just a few weeks back right it says that if we have these kind of partnerships india will be able to create more in india right there are two important schemes it has given with the help of which india can create more they are phased manufacturing programs and production linked incentive programs phased manufacturing programs instead of instead of importing the produced devices in india we can have the manufacturing done in india itself in a phased manner right now for example the panel itself design linked incentive remember right design linked incentive programs these are the programs in which we are becoming a part of the supply chain we say you design this in india we will finance it you design this in india only you generate employment here only we will also be able to see how you are operating technology transfer will happen indirectly so this is one thing that india says through phased manufacturing program and once we are able to design this we will also say we will also test it in india only why send it to sri lanka why send it to vietnam why send it to taiwan so this is how phase in phases we manufacture and slowly and steadily we will capture the better sh share of the market this is what we are doing with japan also right so in study we will be able to understand their technology and the second one is production linked incentive program both the programs are going to increase india's trade participation they are going to ensure that india manufactures so start eyeing eyeing this component this component the imports what are we importing i had shared with you the import basket most of the items that we import is the produced goods and what we export many of the items are the raw materials iron coal right raw material textile uh, cotton we export this a, a part of it we export and then we import textile again processed textile we import iron equipments machineries so this is not done no start looking at this part of import and some parts of the world especially asean countries where we can become a part of the value chain this is what the editorial says see it presents here imports and exports the imports from asean are so high but if we can become a part of this value chain if we can become a part of japan's value chain south korea's value chain we will be able to uh, participate through uh, through uh, these programs the names of the program as i mentioned is uh, production linked incentive and phased manufacturing programs right and what are the entities new entities hearing devices hair wearables smart meters all these can be created in india see these are good examples wearables not only smart watches but now new technologies have come up no where you can you know have a wearable device anywhere in your hand it can start measuring your you know pulse temperature all of it so make trade deals for make in india start using these words phased manufacturing programs production linked incentives the second update is on uh, defense industry uh, and uh, the export market all right which reminds me of this image after 10th march diesel petrol gases all will <laughs> Sky rocket. These are Brahmos missiles, by the way, and this is just a meme. Let's see what what the government does. It is not about this government or that government. Usually, this is what has been seen around the whole country, around the whole world. All right. 
So, getting back to this article in focus, the article says that uh, this BrahMos missile has been one of the you know path showers because through BrahMos later we can target the export of Pinaka, we can target the export of Akash, we can target the export of Tejas. So, what are these entities? If you have seen the Republic Day Parade, which I asked you to see, you would have known that Pinaka is multi-barrel uh, missile launcher, right? Multi-barrel missile launcher. It is a very advanced system that India has indigenously created. Similarly, Akash missile, our own program, air-to-air -air missile. And then we have uh, uh, Tejas aircraft. Slowly and steadily, countries around the world are eyeing all this. There are already eyes being laid by, by Indonesia, by Vietnam for procurement of uh, Brahmos. Yeah, right. And slowly and steadily, see, when India's uh, Tejas went to Changi Airport airbase in Singapore, people appreciated Tejas also. Right. So, contracts have already been given to Tejas by Indian Air Force also. So, point is, there are few issues in construction here uh, or manufacturing. India has given an ambitious target of raising the total export to $5 billion defense export by 2000 and uh, I think five years this is what was the target given five years was target given right five years from now however if you look at the achievements right now they have been meager they have been meager we have been able to achieve around 1.2 billion total exports and we are not exporting these uh, uh, missile launches we are not exporting consumables what are the consumables See, these are, these are capital assets. Consumables are the weapons. They are the, uh, they are the bullets. They are the items which will be getting consumed and which need regular procurement, right? So, we are not being able to send these also. The, although, $1.2 billion is a great growth from 5 years back, which was hardly $250 million. So, this is a very good growth. But now, it is achieving almost a stagnation. I will tell you why. 90% of these exports which are happening are from private sector, 90%. Only 10% of defense PSUs uh, are being able to help in these exports. And these 90% exports that are happening, that are also under some or the other contract obligation. What are the defense exports? Electronic exports, spare parts, right? mechanical exports. These are the ones which are getting exported by uh, defense PSUs, uh, defense private companies, 90% of it. So this is already, and does government give them support? Hardly. The, the government does not give them support. Government is supporting the PSUs, public sector units. But then they are inefficient. Let me give you the example. Inefficient. HAL was producing advanced light helicopter. And Ecuador was ready to purchase it. Ecuador was ready to purchase it. This is back in 2005-2010. That was the time. But then a couple of trials and it ran into accidents. And then this was never, you know, there was no contract further. And this contract got lost. The name of Advanced Light Helicopter also. Despite its decent successes, it was dropped off from the international purchase market. Right. So, inefficiencies, cost overruns, time overruns, inordinate delays. Right. India's shipping industry. Another question it says, India's shipping industry, which we applaud, has not been able to produce those requirements which were asked for. So, this is how we are falling short and the targets that we have raised are enormous. We are not helping our private sector industries grow at that particular pace. PSUs are stagnant. This is the particular issue with the defense industry. Right. Government funding and research manufacturing, small exports, only 10% is through PSU. Ammunition consumable industry, we are not exporting. Ship building industry is not doing well because of uh, being too expensive or not being configured according to what was the requirement. See, we have raised uh, a decent amount of exports, but raising it to five times this, this is a challenge. All right. This is the update here. But then use this fact to, to uh, you know, meet your ends. If they say, can we export more, then give the example of Pinaka, Akash and Tejas. Yes, we can export. If they say, look at or discuss the, uh, you know, uh, export potential, then you speak both the sides that defense PSUs only 10%, private PSUs 90%, but none of it is in consumable industry, right? And it is only, uh, only a small fraction of uh, what the world is exporting, right? India is large, second largest importer of defense items in the whole world. 
फार्मिंग एज ए सर्विस सी ड्रोन एज ए सर्विस मशीन एज ए सर्विस फार्म एज ए सर्विस राइट सो दिस इज अ वेरी गुड कॉन्सेप्ट इन विच दी आर्टिकल मैं लॉट ऑफ मैकेनिकल डिवाइस है दे के नॉट बी ओन बाई फार्मर्स ए ट्रैक्टर वुड कॉस्ट सिक्स टू एट टू टेन लैख रुपीज एंड दो एड ऑन डिवाइसेस फॉर एग्जाम्पल हार्वेस्टर टिलर ऑल ऑफ दम विल बी एडिशनल कॉस्ट a couple of lakh rupees 1 lakh rupees happy seeded machine costing 1 uh, 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees so these machines can be utilized only during one season if it is a harvester only in the harvesting season if it is a tiller only in one season because the cropping intensity is in, in india is hardly 1.4 the crops are laid only 1.4 times at an average in the country therefore the utility of these machines is not much so if we have custom hiring centers in the country right under smam you remember do you people remember we had discussed this complete uh, feature news on submission on agriculture mechanization discussed the complete supply and chain of uh, all the machines so if we have farming as a service this will help the farmers a lot because they will not have to incur the huge cost of purchasing these machines purchasal is still fine maintenance that is a big cost so they will be able to utilize them through hiring this is one thing they will also be able to mechanize it which will increase the productivity levels farming as a service will be a great enabler for the agriculture sector this is the update here right last article here but before that if you like this initiative share some love through likes thumbs up button comments and shares let me see Hi, Landon Ferguson. See, Ferguson is already here. Probably he he was there in that ship. Okay, okay, all of you correct. Thank you for helping this. Kano Priya, Kriti, all of them saying England. Then England. Rahul, good evening. Philippines also. Philippines, so they've already taken no. Rahul. Yes. Okay, great. Moving ahead to the case study. Today's case study is on Kanya Taru Yojana, uh, one of the brilliant schemes. Uh, very, very, very innovative, innovative, and I loved it. Now, under this Yojana, this is this has been when this was launched. This was included as one of the best schemes launched, and then government appreciated under uh, uh, the aspirational districts program. It appreciated this particular scheme because it was doing really well. Now, this Taru Yojana was initiated in Assam. Assam, no. I think this was Assam. As far as I read, this was the Assam where the DM of the Assam uh, districts they also raised it. But where is this? Highlight Kandi. I think this was Assam itself. If you can confirm. So, uh, what is the, under this program is the simple fact that when girl, when a girl child is born, you give that mother or that family some saplings, some trees, some saplings which can be utilized when the girl grows. she will be able to nurture the plant and in turn she will also be able to nurture herself through nutrition so what are the kind of plants these fruit bearing plants would be amla would be oh god people haven't the uh, we haven't written here the kind of five plants five specific type of plants were to be given to that family if you can write that number of uh, you know, name of the plants i think that was amla then uh, oh very good plants were there they were very they would they would to they would give a lot of nutrition to the girl child right and their family as well the new mother so this would not only integrate health in family this is also going to initiate what is called as poshan right if you remember poshan vaticas we have covered this as a feature news in uh, you know all together poshan vaticas so every family will be able to have a poshan vatica around their home so this is a great initiative right now they said they are giving it to the family in which girl child gets born but slowly they will initiate it for the boy child also right so eats fruit and vegetables in the family nutritional literacy afforestation drive in the family all right now in the next article that is on the feature news i will tell you the name of the five plants that is very important alluding to assam all right thank you assam thanks So, if you like this initiative, share some love. And today is Friday. We are going to meet in the current affairs video on feature news right now. But 
it's a friday do not remember do do remember that this is a friday tomorrow we don't meet day after tomorrow we don't meet but this is a very important time when you complete the pending task of adec of all these schemes and just hang on for a few months and then you see the difference in you you are already seeing that difference in the chats here we are seeing this with each other but then uh, this enormous power comes through practice writing memorizing so please follow that and we will meet you on monday but then right now in the feature news just after this all right so thank you for participation i will tell you the names of the five plants thank you